Maybe I'm over Supposed to be a a bit beforehand. I think usually there's a thing. Distract them. <coughs> <coughs> Hello there. My name's Max. Oh, and my name is Sam. Hi. And we are maybe movies where we're on a quest to tear apart some great films and see if we can make something that's passable in its place. <laughs> Sometimes, good. Yes. We have had those as well. Obviously, I'm joined by Sam, as as always. Why am I telling you all of this? You know all of this already. You've been here before, haven't you? Haven't you? We only hope. <laughs> and if you haven't, subscribe button. Oh, and like. Don't forget to like. It'll be quite nice. If you haven't been with us so far this month, then we are getting uh, creative. Come on, guys. Let's get creative. With the... The Ghostbusters? With with the Ghostbusters? With the Ghostbusters, yes we are, yeah. And with the Frighteners as well. Uh, last time we had a look how Frank Bannister would get on uh, in New York. Indeed. When there are shady goings on in Central Park West. Ah, uh, yes, indeed. And this time we will be looking at the other side of this, which will be uh, the team from Ghostbusters in not New Zealand. Definitely not New Zealand. In Fairwater with... A very nasty ghost on the loose. Indeed. As we left it, it's been a bit of a bumper month this month, so I'm sitting pretty on seven stars. Same here. Oh, fantastic. So, neck and neck. Do we have any other business that needs to be brought to the committee? I don't... Well, um... All right, well, just... I I suppose we just want to look at our ground rules. There's a lot of ghosts in the Frighteners, Mm -hmm. but they're not visible. But... He said anus. In the Ghostbusters universe... Ghosts are visible. So, wh- uh, how do we do this? Uh, I was thinking about this earlier myself. Mm-hmm. The only way that I could see that we could make it work, it is borrowing a little bit from Ghostbusters. Mm. but Or rather, it's borrowing a, a trope from Ghostbusters, but the cause is different. It could happen oh, gradually over the course of the film. The ghosts become more visible because of a, almost like a psychic backlash because of the degree, the high degree of murder that is being t- taking place in the town. Right. In the same way, logically, we might argue that the ghosts of New York were visible because of the influences of ghosts. Exactly. Right. Okay. That's kind of where I was leaning. Yes. Because uh, otherwise, otherwise, you know, you have mass panic and everybody can see everything. Yeah. You yeah. know. Exactly. Graveyard's a whole different deal then. Mm-hmm. So at the beginning, I'm kind of imagining they'll be relying on their relying on their tech. Yes, like I know Ray has goggles that he likes to put on. Mm-hmm. So we could just say that at the beginning, he's able to observe certain things because of the gear he has. As we discussed in kind of ground rules, mm-hmm. the Frightness is a much more personal movie. Yes, it is. To reflect that again, so I think my, my initial kind of thoughts when approaching this were, as I think I mentioned, I mentioned in the pitch meeting, we start with Ray living in the town. Mm-hmm. As I said, this is where he's ended up after the city did a 180 on them after all the events with Goza. Mm-hmm. Yep, of course. And as, and as we mentioned before, the house that he's got is the house that he was left by his parents, but it's been stripped bare because he's had to pay all of those costs. Yeah, of course. He's living in the shell of what you know what is in, of his inheritance, if you like. Are we happy then to keep it on that more personal level until we get to a point where... We need the full team. The reason I ask is that is because there is quite obviously a strong love interest in this. And do we want to go down the route of saying that Lucy is a love interest for Ray? No, I hadn't considered that. Good point. She's a very different person to to him, but she's very open-minded like Ray. Yes. I see what you're saying. By the way, I just realised we have two Rays. I know. <laughs> I, I, did, I noticed that when I was watching it again. I was like, ooh. Ooh. Mm. Yes, and it would change things up from Venkman being the one with the love interest. Exactly. Yeah, I think I like that. I think I like that, yeah. Okay, so we can, like, obviously we can go along and see exactly where it happens in the structure, but more or less say the first act is just going to be just Ray. I think so, but I think I think there are elements where we can bring them in. So to replace some of the scenes that we're not going to get because he doesn't have ghostly friends, mm. they can be dropped in with him doing his business, but it may be... 
he's on the phone to Egon or to Winston or somebody. Mm -hmm. So there is that back and forth so that we know that they're in the picture. Yes, of course. Until we need to bring them through. As I said, I think the first act I kind of get. I think I know how the first act works. It's where we go after that that I start to run into problems. Well, that's okay, because all we've got to worry about right now is the first act. Cool. So let's play it out. You see, I'm, I can see a couple of things, but I think it sounds like you've given it more, much more thought than I have. Oh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> so let's begin. So we get the bit same with the bit with Patty in the house. That's all the same. Yeah, I figured that's not going to change. That's our intro to the concept, really, isn't it? It so, is. Yeah. It is. Um, my thought with regards to the first funeral... Well, it's... The bit with the newspaper article about heart attacks and then it goes into the funeral. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My thought about that is that um, crossed wires. The funeral is happening. Ray is going to the cemetery to visit the graves of his parents. But because they know that he runs Ray's occult books in town, they think he's a spooky weird guy. And there's all of that stuff that happened in New York. They see him walking through the cemetery thinking he's messing around on their thing. And that's why he gets turfed away early oh, on right that's nice yeah that's so early on we can set up that while he's in his hometown in this in this respect he's very much an outsider yeah 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 yeah, yeah that's nice it's a nice touch good character work good 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 now this is where I did have a bit of a problem I mean are, are we do we say that he's still driving Ecto-1 oh Oh, of course he paid for Ecto-1, didn't he? Mm -hmm. See, it helps us possibly early on. I mean, Ecto-1 is with him in Ghostbusters 2, so mm -hmm. logically he must have kept it. We're not beholden to that idea, but logically it's Ray's car. Yeah, and if he's down on his luck, he's hardly going to have two cars. Unless we want to save the reveal of Ecto-1 for later. He's got it in mothballs, if you like, so we could do something else. If you want to throw in a little bit of light comedy, he's on a bike, like, like, a, like a, a scooter or something. I don't know, I'm just, again, spitballing. Well, at this point in the story, this is when someone crashes into Ray's garden. Yes. Uh, if he's on a bike, he's not going to do much damage, is what I'm thinking. But we could say that, like, you know, it, you know again, he's down on his luck, Ecto-1 mm. hasn't been looked after all that well, maybe the maybe the brakes fail. Yeah, okay, we can do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he does the thing with, yeah, gives me the card. You yeah. See, now, this, I did, I must admit, when I was trying to figure this bit out earlier, because I was trying to figure out what kind of reason would there be for him to go back later. Couldn't figure it out, and then I was watching the film, and I was like, it was kind of like I got hit by the, the, the column of light. Uh-huh. What, like from the Blues Brothers? Have you seen the light? Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> that one I've seen like, the light. I certainly have, because it's only occurred to me, <gasps> we get the bit with Lucy when she goes to the Bradley house. And then the next bit is her watching the tape of the um, of what happened of the mysterious murderers or whatever it was. Yes. Yeah. What if she got that from Ray's shop? Okay. Or what we can do is to to, to kind of tie it in because obviously we're not going to get the poltergeist activity in their house. Mm. You get the bit earlier on with the two rays. He rips up the card. Later on, you get you still get the scene of them. She's just doing something else, maybe doing some stuff for her work at the clinic. He's doing his exercises. He tries to get all loved up with her. Notices there's another card. Oh, I stopped in there on my way home because I was interested in this thing. And then we get Ray come to the door because he didn't have anything in stock, but has found this tape and dropped it around the house. Okay. 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 It's a, again, it changes everything very much, but again, I, I'm trying to account for the fact that he's not really going to be going around seeing ghosts. Maybe I'm going too hard too fast, but gear is still gear. They haven't exactly stolen it. Why do we not make use of a PKE meter at some point here? Glad you brought it up, because I saw there's two places where we could bring the PKE meter in. I was thinking about bringing it in more at the end of the act, so you get the bit with number 38, the guy in the, in the bathroom. Right. My problem, with, again, this is why I had part of the problem with act two. Because it may bring the other Ghostbusters into it a bit late into the story. But now would be the other option to do it. I'm suggesting bringing it into the story now, because I'm thinking to later on, with Ray himself being a ghost, that I want Ray uh, Stance to already be using the PKA meter because he's already noticed something. So then when he's wandering down the street, you know the bit when Ray's running and he yeah. runs into B Bannister? It would be the PKA meter going me mental because he's just, he got it in his pocket because he's being a bit suspicious about things. Okay, so because we can do it, so we've got a chance here to do, so set, set something up. When he does the original crash earlier in the day, Ecto-1 crashes, glove box flies open, an old PKE meter that's stored in the glove box comes, flies out, lands on the seat. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Knocks on. Yep. We then get the bit later on in the evening when he goes to the house to take the um, to take the thing to, to Lucy. Other Ray chases him out of the house to the car 
the PKE meter goes up. Yeah. And as Ray's backing up, he notices it. Exactly. This is we need we need Ray to be suspicious, and this is yes, I agree. No, and, I do absolutely. And then and then it excuses him starting to dig out the old equipment to use later on. Yeah, it does. Fantastic. I mean, if you want, if we want to spring that out a bit. Lucy and Ray go back into the house, and then they see Ray outside with the PKE meter going, what the hell? He, uh, yes. He comes back out again, and then it goes off really badly, and he's like, uh, what the hell? Uh, basically, look, if you don't get out of here, I'm going to call the cops. Ray doesn't want any trouble. He leaves. He leaves. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Right. Yes. I mean, obviously, I know we're doing the, I know we're doing the, um, the director's cut, so this is where we get the extended bit overnight. Frank would have been with the ghosts. Yeah. This is where I think we throw in... Ray on the phone talking to Egon. Yep, he's Possibly. just noticed something interesting. Yeah. But they're probably, ah, uh, no, I'm not. We could even sort of throw in some of the stuff at the end where Egon's working as a, yeah, as, a, as a psychologist or whatever. Let's see what happens when we take away the puppy. I mean, I did at one point try and think, do we want to? But again, it was a bit, it's very cheesy. They've got some kind of reunion coming up. But th- I didn't like that. No, that's, that's a little too contrived. Yeah. I mean, if we wanted to have contrivances in this... While he's on the phone to Egon in the background, again, because I love doing secondary information stuff, uh-huh. on the background, you've got Venkman on the TV. Hi, welcome back to World of the Psychic. I'm Peter Venkman. Of course. So we know, they are, again, they're all still in the picture. Yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, no, no, just pepper into the background. Just seed the world that they're in. Yes. So that covers that, what would have been the, the whole thing with the with the, meet, the talking to the ghosts and stuff. And then we have babies. And again, this is, right, so are we having some ghost action here? Or what are we doing? The other thing that I thought about with this, if we don't get any ghost action, is, mm, I couldn't find out how, how, how they'd find out, would be in the same way like at the start of Ghostbusters 2, him and Winston are doing kids' parties. Uh-huh. Oh, there's a Ghostbuster in town. He's coming to entertain the kids while I'm out at lunch. But then in the meantime, there's obviously the articles come out in the paper. Uh-huh. And so you still get the same thing, but I don't like it because, again, we lose a really nice scene. We're losing a lot of ghost here. Right? Yeah. But we've already ditched a couple of scenes with ghost action. So... Uh... I think we have to. I think we have to just go, yeah, there is some kind of ghost action. The woman who owns the house doesn't know what to do about it. The maid goes, there's a guy in town. I can give him a call. Yes, and then we can have the confrontation... Yes. Yeah. See, we need to have we need to have some actual haunting going on in, in town. Unfortunately, just to make we sense. We do. We do. Yes. Yeah. To, to make sense of it. Otherwise, we we cut out too much of the film. And, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um. So, oh, well, well, we have a free hand. What kind of ghosts are they? Who? Ah. Oh damn. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but a couple of ghost children. Luck. Shock. Barrel. Playing hide and seek with the babies or something like that. How's that sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. Yeah, and so we get a bit of them running up and down stairs trying to find the babies. They open a cupboard. Yeah, and then, oh, yeah, and then something the movie gets pulled in through the shadows at the back of the cupboard or something, and the pop pops up at the end of the stairs. Or yeah. <laughs> We ought to just videotape this, play it back in slow motion. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. Yes, love it. Love it. Yes. Oh, oh. thank you. Ray turns up um, reluctantly, probably. Yes. Because again, he's not supposed to be doing anything. Uh, and then obviously he gets told to f off because of the um, because of the paper, which brings us up to that's the bit in the street with Ray running. So it makes sense. He comes out of the thing. He's still got the thing in his pocket. It exactly. Goes off. Out come the goggles. Yes, of course they do. Sorry, I was. This is the one bit that I was reasonably sure of earlier on. I yes. was like, <laughs> yes. So how do we get around this? Yes. This is he's got those goggles. So rather than getting a conversation with them, Ray's kind of like because. Dead Ray kind of passes it, sort of runs through him. Yeah, almost. It goes off following the uh, the hearses, so that's Ray's cue to follow them. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Uh, and again, so that gives us a nice little moment of between him and Lucy. I suppose it doesn't matter at the point we're at now. I suppose it's, it's whether or not Lucy would know his history. Certainly, he's known as that kooky occult guy. Yes, that's enough. But that's enough for her. Yeah, that's enough for, that's her. Enough for her. Yeah, but exactly. this will be the time probably when she probably sees the the, the van and sees Ecto One. Yeah. So then we just need to arrange the date. I mean, there's no... If we don't have the bit with Ray getting almost filled in in the grave, and he's still standing by her, and he's got the goggles on, mm. he can see him. Yeah, exactly. Maybe what we get then is, is like, dead Ray realises that Stans can see him, but he can't hear him, so he's trying to, like, lip-read. Yeah, miming at him and... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that would give us our impetus for, for the date. Do we then want, before we get to that, before we get to Excalibur's, do we want to throw in anything else where Ray contacts them again and says, no, something's really wrong here? 
Or are we going to leave that for the beginning of Act 2? Uh... Because obviously he's been living in the town for a while. He will know about this spate of deaths. And he now knows that there is a ghost of one of the people that was killed. I don't think it's enough yet to put two and two together, is it? Not quite. Not until the bathroom. That's kind of the turning point. Yeah, it's the, turn, it's the bathroom. Yeah, it, yeah, that is the turning point. Okay, so we still get the date. Yes. That will probably go in a similar fashion with him getting covered in water. And again, this is what, what I was originally thinking was he goes into the stalls, he's cleaning it off, he takes the PK meter out of his pocket, puts it on the side, it goes off when the guy comes in. Yeah. He goes to kind of look at him, which the guy's like, well, what the hell are you doing? He even does the thing when he does that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then it goes off over here because that's when Bartlett comes in through the wall yes and so he's tracking that scene we still get the bits with the stalls yes and then it's he comes back out and maybe it's just like a shimmer across the mirror as the mirror resets as the guy falls down dead mm, you see I kind of want him to see that you want him to see it yeah otherwise we are holding back too much of the film yeah this is my bad it's my fault I'm it's not it. it's not it's not your fault <laughs> it's the it, Difference in the, the style of story and stiff. It, Ray's not a psychic, so we have to, you know. So what it is is that he does the bit. He goes through the stores. He gets into the last one. He's kind of looking around, and the kind of the meter kind of starts to drop. And then as he's sitting on the toilet, it suddenly goes full up. That's when he pulls. He's got the goggles in the other pocket. Yeah. And as he's going out, he holds them up just in time to see the guy falling and the ghost going back through the mirror. Yes, absolutely. Are we calling the end of Act One here or the, the subsequent chase? <laughs> I th- no, I think I think we should have the chase. I think that we should have the chase. That should be the conclusion. Okay, I did wonder. Again, it is a bit of a, a, a because movie. Obviously, the actor one's in is in a bit of a sorry state. Mm-hmm. No, I suppose we are. We are the goggles enough to track this thing, or does he have something that's mounted in the vehicle that would allow him to track it, like a vehicle mounted PKE meter? Or is that a bit too far? Oh uh, no, we could because movie that we haven't done one yet. So that's our one for this month. Or for this, for this act. And we're right at the end of the act, so it's a freebie. So yeah, so he kind of like pulls this thing off, flies up some buttons inside, and this thing kind of boo, on the roof. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you've got him there with the goggles on as well, trying to drive while he's trying to follow with this thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's how I'm saying this. Uh, because that's him full-on activating as a Ghostbuster. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a little bit drawn in. He's a little bit drawn in. He's using a little bit of his equipment. No, he's fucking Something ghostbusting. Like, yes. Because that's the turn for that character. It's that moment when he's not just being Ray, he's being a ghostbuster. Yes. So that feels like a good turn. It for, does. For it the... definitely does. I'm trying to remember, that. Ch- how does that chase... He loses him somewhere, doesn't he? He does. Oh, that's uh, that's right. Nearly, nearly, nearly goes off the road onto oh, the slope. Oh, that's right, yes. Uh, and then by the time he's pulled back onto the road, it's, 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 gone. it's gone. Yeah. Phone, or nearest phone box, mm-hmm. calling New York. Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And that will be our end of act. Yeah. Cool. Guys, we're <laughs> treading on eggshells a little bit, and I'm sorry, I was trying to... <sighs> throwing up too many problems. You weren't throwing up too many problems. The problems were there. Mm. No, it's just like... But it's like, yep, yeah, okay. But at a certain point, we just, like, have to commit. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Uh, two seconds, and we'll be back with act two. All right, okay, so this is where it starts to get a bit back and forth, multiple things happening at once. Yes. We may have to because movie this just a little bit. Not, I'm, asking, I'm not asking for an actual because movie, but no. we might have to separate it a little bit more because it's the police station, uh, Lucy being interviewed, and Agent Danvers turning up. And then it's the museum, which is, this all happens at about the same time. Yes, that's where things start to get a little bit complicated. I think we have to move... The stuff at the museum till the next day. I think we do. I think we do. Otherwise, otherwise, too much happens too quickly. There's nothing that we we're not giving our characters enough time to do exactly. things. And I mean, because it's going to take time for Ray and the, uh, not Ray, for Egon, Egon and, and the others to get uh, there. To, to get there, yeah. Which is why I'm thinking that possibly then we want to look at, as I say, moving the museum scene back to the next day. Mm-hmm. That's our grand hotel. Yes, yes, that's our grand hotel. But before we get to that, obviously Damas turns up. That was my first question: is what tale does he tell? To Lucy. Uh, Is it just a distorted version of the events in New York? Uh, mm, yeah. This kind of throws back to what I was saying about it being a more personal story. I mean, we don't have to go there because um, it may be, again, a step too far. Were one of the early new victims his parents? I was wondering if that's where we're going to go. To be honest, it's the only immediate lead. As far as we're aware, raise a single child. There are very few other connections personal connections for him which did also I forgot to mention it last time because we hadn't we, we didn't bring this up it did also make me wonder if we'd wanted to have poltergeist activity at Lucy's house in the same way that you were saying before that it's um Deborah watching out for Frank 
it's his parents watching out for him. Oh, from okay. the other side, right? Yes, I was meant to bring it up last time, and I, it just—that's a—that's a thing we could pull. Okay. I think we could pull that out of our asses. We are pulling it out of our asses, but I, I think it's acceptable. Yeah, it's an acceptable level of bullshit. Um, ooh, but uh, oh god, what about this? If you're saying it's it's his parents, what if one of them took the column of light and one of them didn't? So one of them's a ghost and one of them is observing from on high. Oh, have a star. Have a star. And obviously the one, because again, as Frank says, he's stuck there for at least 100 years. Yeah, 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 exactly. Sorry, we're still at the story. So the story's going to be... The death of his parents? The death of his... I think it's going to have to be the death of his parents. Mm -hmm. You know, and then, of course, he would continue and then he went on to make a career as a... As a as as a scam artist, yeah, managed to scam an entire city once. Yes, with some with some lights and special effects, and yeah, yeah. And again, probably this again mentioned the others as well. Oh, what you mean, Pete Venkman off the TV? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. In the meantime, right. I do want to. I just want to have a little moment. Maybe we could add a little layer to this. I'm thinking about Lucy. Mm-hmm. Lucy moved to a small town from the big city, didn't she? Yeah. I'm wondering if she knew Ray from New York before she met New Ray. Do you, do you see what I mean? Oh. Like maybe they've got a little bit of a, a little so bit, of a history. bit of history there. It brings a little I extra like layer it. into the first act and that we get to play with emotionally. And it adds extra weight when she's in jeopardy later. Building on that, because he then gives us an opportunity to throw in a bit of a flashback. She was somehow connected to one of the various jobs that he did as a Ghostbuster. That might be a bit too convenient. I, I was actually thinking of something prior to the first Ghostbuster film. Okay. So years ago when they were younger. Like maybe when they were at university together or something yes, like that. Yes, because she was she was probably pre med. He was studying baroque psychology. Oh, oh thank oh, you. No, 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 that's really nice. Layers, I really baby. like it. And absolutely cue the onion. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really like that. I really like that. It just brings us through like personal. You were talking about personal stuff. Yes, and I also like it as well because I did Put a thing on there about playing on the fact that they're both called Ray. So again, that's a perfect thing. Oh, oh it's a joke. Yeah. We've got suddenly we've got a joke now. Yes. Oh, you see, so you, you managed to bag yourself a Ray. Then <laughs> <laughs> like we've got a running gag. Yeah. Excellent. Fantastic. Feeling a bit better about this now. <laughs> but what we're going to have to remember with this is as well is because the events happen so quick in su- such quick succession in the Frighteners, the police are still out looking for him. Y- yes. So if we're going to delay the stuff to the next day, that's fine. But we're just going to have to have him laying low. Yeah. He's probably going to have to have parked up at Ecto-1 somewhere and head back home on foot or something. Yeah, to avoid... so just something to avoid the, yes. the authorities yeah. until his friends get there. Exactly. That's what he really wants. Is this what you really, really want? Yeah. So we'll pick up with them the next day then. Do we just want to do a hard cut and they are there? Uh... We can... Oh, no, how about this? He, so obviously, yeah, he hides the Vector One. He makes his way home, but it's, it takes him a while. Uh-huh. And in that period of time, we cut to the next day. At least one or two of the others have arrived, and he arri- He discovers them there. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant. And they try and calm him down, and he's kind of babbling about all of the stuff that's been going on. They would have possibly, on the way through, found a copy of the seen a copy of the paper. I always liked the idea that Ray had the paper. Oh, he has the paper. With him. We could even have a thing like. Ironically, this is when my first suspicions were aroused. I didn't think too much of it at the time. I read too much into many things all the time. But since then, as he lays out his trail of evidence, fantastic. Yep, that's good. But obviously, they're just looking at this. They're just looking at the stuff on the front page, or oh, about him. Mm. Okay. Oh, okay. What do you reckon? I reckon at this point we've sent. I think we've definitely got Egon. I think we've definitely got Winston, because they seem quite close. Winston and Ray were always quite close. So I think the last one that we get is Venk. Yes. I think he may have to come in a bit later when he hears what's been going on. Are we are we good with that? I feel like Venkman should turn up after after somebody gets arrested. Yes. Somebody's going to get arrested. And he thinks he can, he can do something about it because he's... That was the other thing I noticed about these two films. Obviously, we never mentioned it before. Mm. But with The Frighteners, technically, it is like a Ghostbusters because there's four of them. Oh, yes, there is. It's just the others are ghosts. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And also there's a weird kind of almost yin and yang thing. One goes from them being four of them at the start down to three of them, mm. whereas the other one goes from three of them at the start up to four of them. Oh, of course, yeah. Just a slight aside there for you folks. A worthy note. This is where we need to have the thing at the museum. 
we do. I, I, I think they actually, at this point, they probably might want to suit up. So what do you reckon? So I think we're going to go in with what we're saying here. There is real-life ghost action at the museum. Yeah, also, we didn't talk about this earlier on, but you said at the beginning how things gradually become more and more physical. Yes. Some things, and also we can use Ray in this fashion, might be able to start hearing ghosts. Yeah. Might catch little glimpses of them, so there'll be a flurry of ghost sightings in the town. It also means that we, we can allow things like the mummy coming to life. <laughs> Which is something, obviously, we never really got in, 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 in Ghostbusters, is them hitting anything physical, as it were. Oh, no, no, of course not, yeah. Uh, that'd be amazing. He's, he's laying everything out for the at the house, comes over the radio, some disturbance at the thing. Obviously, they're going to have to go and get Ecto-1. Maybe it's he's laying it out for Egon and, and Winston's like, what have you done with my car? <laughs> what have you Wait, done with... And so he goes off and... Hang on, hang on, hang on. What happens? Why does he go to the museum in the in the? Because museum? he sees the tunnel of light. Oh, of course. He sees it come right. out through the top of the building while he's down by the shore. That's what happens. So they've got the goggles on. They've kind of suited up. They're wandering around. They look like everybody's looking at them freakishly. Meanwhile, there's a little montage in the background of various little ghost sightings and people hearing things. And mm-hmm. we'll have Ray starting to hear Ray, which we get to play with the jokes there. <laughs> yes. Um, and then one of the guys, while they've got the goggles on, sees the tunnel of light at the museum. Okay. I, I was thinking about this. I mean, kind of ignored it all along the way, but we are in their universe. We're in their universe, but that doesn't mean they're, well. They, they're, if their goggles can see spectral stuff, yes, should be able to see the tunnel of light. I think it should. For some reason, I think it should be Egon. Yeah. yeah, so he can make some kind of weird joke about having suddenly touched the ethereal plane. Oh, <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, absolutely, I'll go along with that. Egon is 100% scientist, isn't he? Of course. I deny your reality. <laughs> Which gets them to the museum. And we get a proper set piece here. Yeah. With them rushing up there. So, do you think then, as you're saying, we, Ray is starting to see snippet of things, whether he's got the goggles on or not. Obviously, he's going to be the one who's going to spot Magda. Magda's who, number, number, yeah. 40. Which, while well, the others are all, uh, again, trying to take care of everything else that's happening... So it's going to be because of quite a big scene. Yes. Obviously, they will have been seen by the... Or somebody would have said, oh, I saw that race dance guy, so the cops are on their way, because they still haven't got him yet. Mm-hmm. Obviously, with damage in tow, no doubt. Are they pulling out the proton packs? I think they're going to have to. You said it was the hotel. Yes. It they, feels they, they, like this is the moment to. to pull out the proton packs. Yes. Which is like, that scene is a lot of carnage in a, of really expensive stuff in a museum, mm-hmm. which is basically what we're going to get with the proton packs. So it, it mirrors... It does. ...quite neatly. Yeah. You were saying about having them a bit with the mummy actually be are some of the local ghosts trying to do something yes no that that does make sense there's because there is no frank Vanderson, there is nobody to take care of this situation so the local ghosts possibly even some of the ghosts of those who were murdered by Butler, are trying to save people themselves so they're taking possession of the dead yes to try and bring them to try and stop Butler. yes okay brilliant yeah but obviously the ghostbusters don't know that so they just think oh it's a, it's a ghost all right do we show the audience that do we start showing the audience stuff that they can't see that's a good question um, do we make it briefly Do because like they're coming briefly visible maybe he becomes briefly visible when he possesses the yeah, mummy yeah. so that we can see it I was thinking you know the guy that comes up and thanks him yes number yes. 12 number 12 yeah, yeah yeah the doctor yeah I yeah. was kind of thinking it might be him or there was the other one the orderly or the porter or whatever he was there was another one, wasn't there? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, the, one who, the one who flies back when, when he sees the flashback, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Either of those two. Now, I think they still destroy the mummy, but that releases the, the ghost back out. And it's what they see them do after that when they suddenly realise that actually they may not all be bad. But then the Reaper comes out. Then the Reaper comes I, out. I, I kind of think we need everybody to see it. Yes, we do. We do at this point. And Winston fires a, like, a, like a, a stream at something to try and capture it. It clips... The, the, the Reaper mm-hmm. and you just get that kind of glitter or almost like a shimmer across it and everybody sees it sorry I wasn't being clear when I said everybody I meant all of the Ghostbusters yes I, I, okay I'm not sure that we're ready for people to see the Reaper yet I think we should save that for the last act well, I think we can still do it we just say that by this point in the action all of the non-Ghostbusters are out, out of the museum with the possible exception of Magda who's around a corner somewhere yeah okay yeah that's fine that works so, and then so you get the same thing you've got the cops in the doorway with their guns pointing at Ray Magda walks out behind them he sees her with the number on it yeah that's that's fine now in the movie obviously he escaped with Magda yes they had another car crash and things happen mm-hmm. skipping that are we having Ray arrested at the museum I don't know I, I think we're going to have to yeah 
I think it may just be he sees her on the other side of the police, the police are in the way, they can't get to her, and then... As he's the being taken out in handcuffs, we see the... the, the... I think it has to happen in this moment. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Well, no, no, I mean... Well, it, it, uh, no, I was just going to say, it has to happen in this moment because we've got a nice impasse there. You've got the three of them standing there with their proton packs on. Cops and cops between them and the, vic- and the next victim. And Magda, yeah. They can't do anything. She gets killed there. They see it. Obviously, the cops don't because she's behind them. Uh, of course. And they can't do anything, obviously. It could be something similar. He goes, no, Ray, don't. We're wearing unlicensed nuclear accelerators on our backs. Yeah. Bullets are about to start flying. That's not what you want. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah, no, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And again, because the town have got that kind of small town mentality, they're not going to put two and two together that Ray wasn't involved, just this happened and he was present. Yeah, of course. Kind of almost to get the... Came, we saw, we kicked its ass! Except, obviously, in this case, Ray then gets dragged off in the cuffs. Yeah, of course, yeah. I was also thinking as well, just to tie it in with, the, with our, as our, our, our version of the film, for legal reasons, they can't call themselves the Ghostbusters. Uh, with the Freightbusters. Yes! <laughs> oh, have a star! Yes. Yes, have a star, mate. That's Fantastic. perfect. Yeah, Name drop. And again, I was thinking as well, because obviously they're, they're probably not in New York State, so they can get away with... Because I think they were banned, weren't they, from New York, from ever hunting ghosts until they get the court order turned over. Was it the city and the state? Certainly the city, I can't remember. I know it was the city, but I'm not sure if it was the entire state. I, I might be wrong. I can't remember. It's been a long time since I've seen Ghostbusters 2, so... Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's in the city of New York. So they should be fine out here. Yeah. Fantastic. So, Ray's in jail. This obviously makes the paper, this makes the news, which obviously is going to bring Benkman in. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. What are we doing with Lucy at this point? She hears that he's been arrested and turns up at the station to make sure that he's okay. Yes, that's brilliant, yes. Which makes perfect sense because we've just added in a completely subplot line that <laughs> exactly. explains all of that. Yeah. So we still keep her, keep her hand in. I was looking originally with this is that rather than her officially meeting the Ghostbusters... There's the whole bit where she goes up to his house and then she meets them there. Oh, well, right. Okay. But we can go either way. Well, it sort of feels like it's going to happen here because this is this is around about the point Venkman's going to turn up. Isn't yes. It? Not, not immediately, of course, but... Uh, so we've got the the interview with Frank and Danvers, or sort of Ray and Danvers. I take it um, Egon and Winston are still free to go about their business? Uh... Or do we want to keep them all together? Uh... I mean, they could still be being taken down for questioning because they've just trashed the museum. Yeah, I feel like I want to put the boys, yeah, down the police station. I want to put everybody together, I think, at this point. Cool. Then what I'm going to do now... Now? Yes. Yeah? Yeah, so we're going to take a a quick break in the action, as it were, to do a quick shout-out. And this is for a couple of our old, old friends uh, who've been uh, followers of ours, as we are followers of theirs, since we first started. Uh, This is for James and Danielle, otherwise known as Unstable TV. Oh, hey guys, how's it going? So, they, they, most of the channel for, for a while was doing a lot of top 10 list stuff, some tasting stuff and unboxing stuff, things like that. Mm-hmm. But over the past kind of couple of months, I think it is now, their content has been turned totally upside down, both in terms of content and in, geographically. Oh, right. <laughs> yes, they emigrated to Australia. Oh, goodness me. Yeah. Oh, well. That's a heck of a journey to have taken there, guys. So a lot of the content now, again, still doing some tasting stuff and obviously different things from down, down under, but also charting their, their journey across Australia. Well, good luck, guys. I hope it turns out well for you. Yes, yes, yes. And again, as always, guys, thank you for your support and keep the flag, the Irish flag in their case, flying. Thanks, guys. Okay, okay. So, we so, can do, we're, we're, so we can do a flip-flop then between the bit with Dammers with Ray... And the sheriff interviewing Egon and Winston. Mm-hmm. I take it that the stuff with Damas is going to be about the death of his parents. Yes. Yeah. We could have Frank and Danvers about his parents and getting very intense and over the top. Yes. And then it will cut back back and forth with the chief. Yeah. With like, I'm just imagining he's like, so what's this for? And Winston's like, I don't know. He built it. <laughs> and then Egon will come out with some ridiculous line of techno babble and the chief will just be like, Okay, moving on. <laughs> this is deputy <laughs> sat there. Did you get that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. And then obviously, so Lucy would have been there, then mm-hmm. pushed her away. Uh, well, no, they kept her separated from them. But because we've done it differently, she always said she arrives at the station at the same time they bring them in. So there would have been a bit of a scene between them when they go off before we do this bit. Yeah. They would have got, so they would have probably told her to go home. That actually works because then that gives us the bit where she then goes up to the house. 
finds all the stuff that Ray's been working on, mm. and then obviously overhears the phone call from Mrs. Bradley. Ah, about Patricia, right, okay. Which sends her to the house where we lose dead Ray. Right, okay, yes, brilliant, brilliant, yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that works perfectly. The only thing that we don't have, obviously, in this setup is we don't have a Stanley knife. Yeah, we don't have Frank's knife. I was literally just looking at that yeah. that bit in the, my, 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 my notes. Ray's father's glasses were never found. Some kind of personal trinket. Glasses was the first thing that popped into my head. Uh, oh, no, no, no. Why, why? No, go on. Ray says that his parents left him that house. There's no reason that they... They may have left it to him, but before they died, they died later. Maybe they were getting too old to manage the house. Yeah, it happens. Like yeah. Yeah, yeah. Maybe it's a little key fob with the Ghostbusters symbol on it with Ray stands on the back. And that was the thing that was missing. He had it as a key fob on his for his car keys. And they oh, never okay. found that when the bodies were found. And he, she finds that in Patricia's mother's bedroom. Yeah, okay. If we're keeping that element of the story there, that would be my alternative. I understand what you're saying. Unfortunately, the significance of the knife is because it's material evidence. Yes, of course it is. Um, which is why two-thirds of the way through this act, nearly further, why can't we just because movie and it was his dad's utility knife? Yes, of course. Yeah. You know, because if we give them the same death, they died in a car crash. Yes. You know, going off the road, but they had the number they carved. They had the numbers on the, on the heads, yeah. Then we've still got the same significance for Danvers and for the did. story. Of course we did. They Obviously, did. Ray's nowhere near that place, so yeah. he's not a material suspect. No. But her finding the knife... Mm-hmm. I said, I, 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 I want the knife. Danvers has mentioned it. Yes, that makes sense, yes. Sorry. That was... So that's brings us back into it where does, we need it to does, be. It does, it does. Okay, so that brings us up to that's there. That's goodbye, Ray. Goodbye, Ray. And then Lucy goes back to the jail. Yes, and this is going to bring us up to the end of Act 3. Also, end of Act 2. But this is also where we want to then bring in Venkman. Yes. Because he turns up to try and break them, or to try and break them out, to try and get them out. Do we think he's turned up with um, with a camera crew from his show? Yes, that would be brilliant. That because they would be too intimidated by being on camera, yes, being small town folk, they'd be like, ah, uh, oh, oh, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, okay, then, yeah, have a start. Oh, brilliant. That's brilliant because that really explains why he just intimidates his way in the front door. Yes, and of course, we'll probably have the um, have a, a bit of a, a Venkman leer at, um, at at Lucy, and she's like, yeah, no. Nah. Sorry. <laughs> Actually, that kind of goes into one thing. We changed the dynamic because obviously Lucy's motivation in the original film is to convince Frank that she believes him and that he needs to do something. Ray doesn't need convincing, but she has a relevant piece of information. She knows where the ghost comes from now. Yes. So we could have that. Yeah, no, no, I'm not interested. Well, by the way, Ray, I found this. Yes, I like it. I like it very much. Yes. Yes. No, it's not that clever. It's okay. just a little moment. Fine. No, really, it's just a little thing. It just lets the scene flow. You can, she can reject him and then just immediately turn to Ray and go, by the way, blah, 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 yes. blah, blah, blah. Because he's the only important person in the room to, to her. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, I'm invisible. I'm, I'm turning into you. <laughs> Maybe Venkman makes a dry comment in the background about how he didn't care in the first place. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, Don't all take me back. She'll take me back. Which brings us up to Attack at the, th- at the Prison. Attack at the Prison, yes. If we're going down this route that we're getting more ghostly activity, I think we start getting ghostly activity before the Reaper arrives. Things start going strange. Yeah. We can have Damas going, oh my god, he's using some mind powers or something. Oh, absolutely. Freak out. Ah, that's brilliant, because that gives us the lead breastplate moment. It does. I yes. couldn't think of a reason for him to bring out the lead breastplate with before, but that's a great excuse, yeah. I think it's going to be because the Sheriff is, is, is kind of open to the idea, isn't he? Yeah, he is. He is. Mildly curious, yeah. So I think once once he starts seeing stuff happening, obviously he, he can't do anything about Ray because he's under federal jurisdiction. But the other two, if I'm not in the room at the time, I don't know what's, I don't know what you're doing. I don't feel like we want to separate Ray from the group. Now we've got the group, we need to keep the group together. Okay. Oh no, all I meant was at this moment. So the sheriff goes out to deal with. Oh, him. so the sheriff sheriff's like, you guys go ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. So 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 that he so that the other two, so that Ray, uh, Egon and, and Winston certainly can start getting the packs. Yeah. Because shit's going down all around them. Yeah. But as I said, he can't do anything about Ray because he's with Damas and, as again, federal. Or are you saying we override that under the circumstances? I'm, I'm saying we could because movie this and have him go, screw the FBI. Yeah. Like, if we're having actual ghost stuff happening in the in the police station. Yes. Yeah, 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 absolutely. He could just go, screw the FBI, yeah. get out of here, yeah. I need you to do something. And, of course... 
You've got Venkman on the other side, rushes out to the van. Unless we just... No, 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 their equipment's in the place. <laughs> yeah, just for convenience sake, it's all there. Yeah, yeah. Like, like how it's on the table in Ghostbusters 2. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> yeah, so we want to keep them together. We don't want... Because my initial thought about this was Egon, Winston and Venkman fight off whatever's happening at the police station while Ray gets Lucy away because she's the next target. Because this brings up the next bit... Are we going in? Are we going for an out of body experience or not? Well, this is the thing. We don't need to go for an out of body experience we don't, because they've got the equipment. Yeah, I mean that's psychic stuff. Mm-hmm. This is Ghostbuster stuff, so we don't have to follow the same rules. It's, a psychic would have to do a giant astral projection if he wanted to interact with ghosts, but they've got technology. Okay. So I think we're, so. I think this is where we're going to have to deviate then quite seriously from the plot because right. What I imagined in my head is that the chief, the chief has let them out, but it's going to take them a few minutes to get their equipment on. So at first, all they've got is their goggles. They can see where the Reaper is, but they can't do much about him. Yeah. And then as they go along, they're slowly putting on more pieces of equipment. So that forces Ray and Lucy to retreat through the building. Kind of like how they escape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in, they're, in they're, the they're, original movie. So they're, yeah, yeah, they're staging. Yeah, yeah. As, as the retreat. boys are slowly, desperately yeah. strapping on their pro after roton packs and trying to get something going. Okay. So that would create the tension and force them out of the police station. But I want to have the boys follow them out. Fair enough. That sounds good. Presumably because the Reaper gets past them and they have to chase after it because it's now going after Ray and Lucy. Of course, of course, of course, of course. So yeah, so this is happening once they get outside and they think they're in the clear. That's when you get Dan as Paul jumps up, grabs Lucy into his car, and drives off with her. Ooh! Oh, that's genius. Because that will at least then... Just out of nowhere. Yeah. Snatched from the moment of triumph. Yeah, which then leaves us with the other guys there. We still get the moment where, with the with the streams, they knock away enough of the reefer to reveal who's underneath. Yeah, to reveal Johnny Park. Yeah. yeah, absolutely, because we need that reveal. It's kind of important to the whole story. It is, yes. Which, but that's, that's, our, that's our act. It's a long one. It is a long one. We have I knew to... it was wobbly. Yeah. It was wobbly. So we'll keep it together. Yeah, just about. Our ectoplasm hasn't dried up just yet. <laughs> Not yet, folks. Not quite anyway. <laughs> Let's see if there's enough juice for Act 3 in a moment. So it's still alive at the moment. It's still alive. This works. Now, in the original film, they had a 20-minute timeline because of him being out of it. Obviously, she's just been kidnapped. That's what's going to add the urgency to to what happens next yes oh right okay right yeah this is gonna be the chase damn this is one of those things i kind of wanted to find a way to to fit in earlier on i wanted to have a little moment when the car got fixed up because everybody was together and they had the money to pay ray whatever happened to fail ray we could have thrown that in then beginning of act two when the guys first turn up really necessary for the first action after that we kind of want the car to work as best it can yeah so while egon and ray are Going over all of his, all of his notes, Winston's outside for tuning up the car. Okay, yeah, that's brilliant. Yeah, fantastic. Which means, uh, yeah, we've got a chase. Obviously, everybody's geared up. It's great. Sorted. Should we have it so that they don't need the visors anymore to see the Reaper? Yeah, I think I so. I think this, I is, think this so. is Act 3. Yeah. Things should be fully, fully the way they are. So, it's a chase. And this is great that we get to use something that was actually meant to be used in a potential third Ghostbusters did get used again in Ghostbusters Afterlife, which is the gunner seat. So even though Ecto-1 can't quite keep up with Danvers' car, they're able to keep on his tail. Yes. And they have to use the gunner seat to try and keep the Reaper off, off, of, off of Danvers' car. Oh! Oh, thank okay, you! No, that's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. It's almost tempting, but I know we don't want to do that. To say, because they know now who it is, Yeah. most of them go chasing after Lucy... One of them goes up to the house. But I suppose they don't know where the house is. Where does Danvers take her? He takes her to the graveyard, doesn't he? takes he? her to the graveyard. That's right. I was going to say, maybe Venkman goes up to the Bradley house. Again, he's got his TV crew with him. <laughs> oh, I forgot about the TV crew. Uh, yeah. So, oh yeah, it's good material for the show, going to the murder house. But then we lose the bit with Lucy later. and then that's and that, But again, we're in uncharted waters here. It's just, I'm always tempted to do one of those things where the TV crew is doing a live feed. Like we do a cutaway in a New York you know, live live feed ghost Busters back in action or something like that. Oh, Fright Busters, Fright uh, Busters, sorry. Fright Busters, <laughs> Fright Busters in action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you've got a, a, a convoy of like three cars. So there's oh, Danvers car yeah, being chased yeah, by FTA1 yeah, yeah, being yeah. followed by the yeah, camera oh, crew. Yeah, no, that's better. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's better. So are we saying that Damas manages to lose them 
and so they have to try and track him down just to stretch it out a bit. So we still get the scene with him and Lucy in the graveyard. Yes, yes, yeah, we absolutely because that's that's Danvers' best scene. That's it just is. pure gold. You can't get rid of that scene. Yeah. Still love Jeffrey Combs. He's, he's just fantastic. Oh right, how do we do this? Well, I'd, we've already given a bit of limelight to those other ghosts that were murdered by Johnny, so maybe they're the ones who drive the we've car away. We've done this the wrong way around, haven't we? What's the what's what's, what, what, what's going wrong? We've done this ass about face. Why? What have we done wrong? Because the reveal of Bartlett in, is in the graveyard. We've moved it sooner. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Are you got a thing. Are you I've got a thing. thing. Okay, cool. Okay, and then I'm all it is. It's a long distance chase. We don't remember right. Danvers gets uh, Danvers uh, manages to lose them temporarily for mm-hmm. some reason, so he gets a little bit of a head start. Okay, let's say because it's quite a hilly place. We need to give him enough time to give his speech. He takes a shortcut down one of the hills. They have to go all the way round. Yeah, and that's exactly. enough for him to get out of line of sight, and he gets it to make it to the graveyard. Yeah, absolutely. We have the scene at the graveyard. Danvers gives us a speech. Blah, 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 all of that stuff. Then the Reaper arrives. Yes, and all of the ghosts in the graveyard. Including the sergeant. Uh, okay. Brr, obviously, he devastates them with his scythe, mm-hmm. but it gives the guys enough time to turn up. Gotcha. With you. I know I'm driving this really hard, but bear with me. This is where we get our big scene. All four of them together, all geared up, yes. out with the proton packs, do the classic maneuver. You know, yeah. out comes the trap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Breaks out of the trap. Yeah. Oh, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which means it's in the movie, although it's never explicitly stated. Patricia did magic to get Johnny yes. out of hell. They can't trap him. He's got magic on his side. Yes, that works. So they have to go back to the house. Gotcha. Which takes us back to where we need to go. Obviously, we're not going to get the flashbacks. I try to think... I, the best I can do is having the actual ghosts appear and tell their stories. But that kind of slows things down, so I don't know how much we want to make of that. That's it the depends, only one suppose, that gets close to having de- the flashbacks. I suppose it depends on whether or not we want... Lucy to go to the house on her own first because obviously when Frank comes back from the dead he says it's Johnny Bartlett he's still recovering and she goes to the house uh, they're still going to go to the house they are still going to go to the house it's just the kind of individual peril that obviously Lucy goes through by going up there on her own and almost getting and getting attacked by Patricia mm. Mm. so we do it differently they all go up there including the film crew Mrs Bradley comes out with a shotgun <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah that's a good start. And at some point, oh, yeah, so how about this? We can still get a bit of peril here. They're all trying to deal with that situation. Lucy spots Patricia doing a runner into the old hospital with the remains and follow and runs off after them. Yeah. Yes, yes. take it. Yay. Uh, you got the that was a solution to a problem. Yes. That was a solution to a problem. <laughs> and it wasn't a because movie. Phew. And then they suddenly notice that she's not there. And then see lights up in the thing. So I'm figuring, I, you know, we still want to have the stuff with Danvers, but he just won't show up until they're all in the hospital. Yeah. We, don't, we don't need to see him following them. He could just turn up. No, exactly. At this point, he wants revenge. Exactly. Of course he does. Of course he does. And there's four of them, so he's probably got two Uzis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so no doubt, while they're trying to resolve this situation, Ray's probably the first one to notice. He kind of heads off and so they all go up and then we'll get a bit where they're going to have to split up while they're trying to investigate. Again, they can do more damage that way if they split up in the, in the old hospital. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Got to have that line. I'm trying to think how we do this. I mean, we could do it like in the movie where Ray is like, we need to get the remains to holy ground and we can do a thing. Yes. It could just be that they need the remains and Patricia's got them. Like maybe they need to destroy the remains with their proton packs or do something to the remains. That doesn't necessarily mean they need the chapel or we could just go with the plot that was in the Frighteners and say, you know, because traditionally we can you take it, unholy things. We could possibly have our cake and eat it. Okay, how's that? They need to get the remains, put the remains in the trap and then summon, and then trap his ghost in there with the remains. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. that's a good one. Yeah, that's that's great. So it's a double whammy. It's, it's, it's you know, it, it's a gated challenge. <laughs> yeah, 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 it's two for Get the remains and then they've got to trap him with the remains, remains in, in the, the trap. trap. Yeah. Yeah, that's great. How are they going to do this? <laughs> well, here we go. Uh... Are we going along the lines of this then that, that essentially that the Ghostbusters have script immunity? How do you mean? Can we kill any of them? I'm not well, saying, that, s- no, I'm not saying no, that I want to. No, we level. can't, but we can seriously threaten them. In the same way, like in a couple of points in the front, he reaches in and grabs hold of Lucy's heart, but 
he gets dragged away before you can do any serious damage. Yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Probably going to be Winston, because I think that was, was the, supposed to be the setup for the character, wasn't it? That he was the everyman that just everything happened to. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Right, okay. So this kind of goes how we want it to. Uh, but yeah, there's going to be some back and forth. There could be multiple armed people in the building, and they. So they've got to. Now, in the original film, Patricia's got a shotgun. In this version, she doesn't. Okay. Well, right, that makes it simpler because oh, then no, it becomes. No, it would have been a shame. I was going to say because obviously Mrs. Bradley's got her shotgun. What if Bartlett's shotgun is still at the hospital? Oh, the one in the flashback. Yes, of course. Take it. <laughs> yeah, take it. That's lovely. That's a lovely callback. <laughs> Take I it. was wondering about what, actually would we get away with it because if they didn't have the um, the murder which weapon, which gives they us an excuse to do the flashback. So the flashback is keyed. <gasps> no, no, it's yours. It's yours. No, it's no, your no, win. No. no, that's your win. No, my you... win for that, but I didn't say about doing the flashback. You just said that. Okay. <laughs> no, no, we get to keep a, a, a you know a, a really intrinsic part of the film yeah. that we thought we were going to lose, but because it's tied to the shotgun, yeah, yeah. that's fine. If you want to. If you want to double down on that, or double, if you want, if you want to take it to its logical conclusion, it's Lucy that has the flashback. She's been through a bizarre trauma. She can see things that other people can't. <laughs> <laughs> we win. Yeah, we win. Fantastic. Uh, oh, okay. So, but we've still got to figure out how we get this. Um, I know we, it's kind of fallen by the wayside as we've been discuss- talking about it. We, I know we were saying stuff about his parents. Mm-hmm. So I take it through all of this, there should be like the hand of whichever one of his parents is the ghost. Yeah. Because I'm thinking that we could build this up to a nice moment at the end where the ghost of whichever one of his parents it is takes the column of light that's in the chapel. Oh, and I see. And obviously Ray can see that. And it's that, that kind of final closure for him. Catharsis. Yes. Yeah, that's the bunny. But obviously that's towards the, that's at the end we still need to do deal with Johnny. Because I'm assuming we're going to lose the ashes. Oh! Mm, no. Oh, oh! You That's see, I, I, I want to say no, but on the other hand, we lose, lose that just brilliant moment in the story when everything gets subverted. Just uh, then, the solution has to be something to do with Patricia. It has to be. Uh, do they have to trap her? Yeah, that's what I was thinking. That she's actually—it's not his ashes that's holding him there; it's her. Yeah. So they have to kill Patricia. <sighs> It's not really where we were intending to go with no, this story, was it? Unless it's not them that kills Patricia. Well, having said that, we just blew Davra's face off. Davra's being the nervous type. He's got a trigger finger. They shoot each other. Ah. So Davra's is the one who kills Patricia. That would take, that would take the blame away, wouldn't it? God, this is really bad. <laughs> How can we get away with the well, perfect murder? Well, the Frighteners is quite dark. There's a lot of murder is. in it. Murder, murder, murder. Ghostbusters is lighter, but the Frighteners itself is a lot of death and murder. There is, yes. I mean, it could even be that it could even be that when he fires, he hits her. She doesn't die straight away, but she is dying. So he delivers the killing blow. <gasps> no, 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 no. You're right. You're right. But I know how it ends. Okay. Because it's them as a couple that everything happened around, right? Yes. It, not not just the ritual that brought them back from hell, but everything that they did together as a couple. So. You get your moment with Danvers and Patricia killing each other. Patricia's a ghost now. So they can trap them both. It's simple as that. Simple. It's yeah. as simple as that. Yeah. It really is as simple as that. Yeah. And we can even do something similar to what Frank does. They trap her to trap him. So they've got him. <gasps> oh, they've got her caught in the proton beams. Get him to jump into the proton beams. Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. Fantastic. And then you get to the bit where... He sees his dad or whatever. Yeah, of course. Go up in the, rain, in, in the thing of light. And how are we ending it then? How is What is the actual end? They turn down the house or whatever. Is that what's going to happen? She's going to take up win and come and work in the store with him? Or probably not, she's a doctor. She's got her own career. But the house gets pulled down. We see those two together. I mean, I think we get a bit of an ending like the, like the ending of The Fight Nurse because we want to see her be the psychic person. Now. Yes. Because that's like... In Ghostbusters 3. Exactly. You yeah. Know, they've exactly. got a psychic friend. Yeah. They, you know, it kind of builds. It does. It should be at the store. But, like, you know the bit when she looks over at the police car? It's it's the same thing, but they're having fun in the shop yeah. and being a couple. And then the chief turns up. and blah, 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 blah. Oh, yeah. And then she looks out the front window of the shop and goes, 
Oh, your passenger looks a little pissed. Yes, of course it is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, I get you. Yeah, and he drives off and he has a <laughs> chuckle. Yeah, that works. Q, uh, don't fear the Reaper, and off we go. Perfect. Whew. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I wasn't sure if we were going to break that one. I was kind of confident on Act 1, then it started getting ropey, and I was like, I haven't got anything for Act 3 because I don't know if we're going to get that far. I genuinely, there was there was a version of this where it ended about five minutes into Act 3. We're going to take a couple of minutes, uh, gather our thoughts, and we'll be back to cast our votes on this month's movies. And we're back. Oh, right. Uh, oh, God, I'm going to need to count now. I am on a record-breaking 12. I am on a record-breaking 12. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the first time I've ever gone into double figures. Stone. Sounds good. <laughs> I'll screw you. <laughs> ah! Okay, I'm going first. Uh, okay. Okie dokie. Ah, oh, this is a really hard one. It is a really hard one because I like, I like what we did in both. Uh, I think, I think the Ghost Hunter, without even acknowledging that, essentially he is in a team of four the same as the Ghostbusters. So odds are even, as as it were, mm. in terms of what he needs to do in the film. It worked really well. We did some nice stuff, and it feels like a Ghostbusters film. We drew on enough of the source material that we know of Frank from the Frighteners, mm. and made it have an have an effect in The Ghost of the okay. okay. So I really like it for that. Then you've got this, which, in terms of what we've done here today, feels a lot more seat of the pants. It's yeah. a lot rougher around the edges, but... But? When you add the polish to it, is it going to be the better of the two films? And I... Uh, I'm really tired. I don't know. I would quite happily sit down and watch both. That's the problem. <laughs> I'm sorry guys I'm really this is a a, a real sticking point oh. I don't know Honestly, I have never seen you this indecisive before I normally I normally know you know certainly by about act two if not earlier in the in the second film I'll know which one is going to be oh right but this time I, I, I the problem is is that because this one is so fresh in my mind I need a bit more time to digest it obviously I haven't been editing the other one for about the past week uh, past couple of weeks that one's really fresh in my mind of course and it's like is this a better movie or is that one a better film but it's <laughs> I am really sorry um, honestly I, this is a really tough decision um, oh dear I think you're going to have to go, man. Uh, I'm sorry. I I need a bit more time to think. Ironically, um, I am the complete opposite. I actually had a preference before we started. Okay. And it's the same now at the end. Uh, uh, Fright Busters, absolutely all the way. Okay. Uh, I enjoyed it more. Even though it was more questionable at the beginning whether or not we'd be able to make it work. Mm Mm-hmm. I enjoyed it. I knew I was going to enjoy it, and I did enjoy it. That's all. That's what we're here for. Okay. Oh god, this is back to me again, isn't it? Um, what do you think? Which one are you? Going, which one are you voting for? Sorry, what was that? Speak up. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you, I think you're right. Yeah. I think you're right. I do like the ghost now. I do like the fact that it worked, and we made, as I said, we made got everything in in there. Yeah. But and again, it's something that we have brought up before. We had, I think, we've had a lot more fun doing this one. Yes. I'll, I'll agree. I'll agree. I won't deny it. Yeah, I definitely have more fun. Yeah, it, and it has been a more of a roller coaster getting this one to work. So yes, okay, yes, I do finally <laughs> agree that uh, Frightbusters would be my vote for our maybe movie for March. Phew! Sorry that took so long. <laughs> <laughs> We've been stuck before, but never this badly. And we get to try and do all of this again later in the year. Sorry. <laughs> but, shh. More on that later. Uh, Yes, so now, of course, it's over to you guys at home. Please do look back over the month and see what we've done here. uh, And also check out our polls, which will be running on our community tab. It will be on our pinned post on Twitter X. And it will be on our Instagram story today as well. These will be running uh, running through for the next day or so. And then at the pitch meeting for April we will announce which one is the winner. As those of you who were here at the start of the month will know, we had a bumper vote of 49 Mm -hmm. on the community tab. Homina, homina. 
So, 50 is the number to me. <laughs> Go on, people. Challenge us. But until the beginning of next month, as always, please do look after yourselves and one another, and we will see you then. As always, guys, TTFN. I think what we need to do is we need to celebrate this by going and seeing if that bloody... if. Frozen Empire is in the existential film library. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And assume the position. There's a, there's a whole cinema in here. Oh, oh my god. Ba 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 ba